get ready for a game changer. Game Changer is without question one of our most ambitious shows. This is Game Changer, the only game show where the game changes every show. The point of the show is that the rules of the game change every single episode. So the cast, when they walk onto the stage, they have no idea how to play the game. Now you all understand how the game works? No, it's not been explained yeah, to any that, of us. Yeah, the game's is different all the time. You said that. So we don't know what's happening today. <laughs> That's the longest that bit's ever got on. Our host, Sam, will intentionally try to push the envelope. I truly love this from a technical standpoint because every time I get the show, I get to learn something new. And the cast is filled with a bunch of just brilliant improvisers, comedians, stand-ups. Sam says, do something jiffable. We'll start with you, Lou. And because they're unsure about the nature of the game, it's quite possible that the play space could be anywhere literally on stage or in the entire building. So for a show like that, we'll bring a producer on a little bit earlier and make sure that they have the support they need from appropriate department heads. There's a lot of physical props. That prep process really is about making sure that we're ready to go for production because there are so many moving parts. With the growth of the show and with like literally the stage has grown because they are having so much crazy blocking in the show, we need to light much more of a space. And the answer is clearly in the direction of using space lights. Space lights are almost like the grenade of lighting tools because you're lighting a large area. We have a large, very diverse cast with a wide range of skin tones. So I will have dimmers on every single light and we adjust per people's skin tone. There is a lot of effort to make our talent look good on stage, so space lights are really the perfect tool to accomplish all of that. The look of the show is high key and it's also meant to sort of borrow from that like 60, the 50s, 60s aesthetic. It involves a lot of like 8, 9 p.m. text messages of me being like, is this a potential thing that we can do? What do you think? Is this executable? Yeah. So you need a light like a Nova P600C that has different light engines, that can do different colors, that has different effects. We were dealing with seven or eight different looks that we had to execute in, in only a matter of a couple hours. We have control, we, the DPs in this case, to see what's happening in a scene and feel out what that cue might be. Because remember, a vast majority of Game Changer is improvised. And that's when Citus Link is great. I'm walking around with my iOS device and I'm able to trigger it right then. I'm able to change my mind in real time and go somewhere else on the color spectrum, for example. So that's why that's particularly valuable. If we can expand our production capability, our physical production capability, then we know come next season of any show, we can expand our creative ability. I do hate zombies, and I will have nightmares about this tonight. But in this moment, I just feel like I'm surrounded by friends. My roots are in producing, and I think producing is truly the art of balancing the needs of the product and the business along with the creative demands. And so when you think about it, it's very much a chicken and the egg, right? We want to create great comedy content for our audience, which we know our audience knows and loves. And at the same time, we're not a huge studio, nor are we a huge production company. So we are a little bit limited in what we can actually physically create. Every single season, we do work with a budget. They will say upfront, usually at the beginning of the show. Everybody has budgetary constraints, absolutely. So that's something that we're always kind of dealing with. But then it's looking at kind of line by line in that budget and saying, well, okay, how much of this is going, how much of this expense is gonna end up on screen, right? And so that's always a consideration, like is this spend worth it? Is this going to make the show X percent better? It's all in preparation. Everything happens, all the details, really need to be thought about in advance. As is the nature with anything unscripted, particularly with game shows, you can't ever actually prepare for everything that's coming down the road, but you certainly can do your best. I think, you know, it's interesting. Obviously there's a lot of different types of comedy out there, but a lot of what we do is talent driven. If you look at the types of performances that we ask our players to bring us, so much of it is improvisation. <clears throat> Sam says, upset a producer. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you got it, Lou, it turned off. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. Comedy very specifically is a matter of timing and camera operating specifically can help a joke or it can, it can destroy a joke. At the moment, we don't use jibs. We're not using, you know, cranes. We're, we're pretty straightforward in our shooting style and our format, really allowing the players in the comedy to come through on camera. Five, four, three, two. The advice I give to any creator, regardless of what your resources are, you start with the comedy. You start with great comedy, which sometimes can take work. Look, I think if you're a, if you're a content creator at home and you, you want to be starting your first comedy series or something along those lines, I think one of the big keys is to think about, honestly, not getting in the way of the story. Don't detract from performances because of your lighting. Try to get out of the way to some extent. Really, it's, it's our cast that's driving the content. They're the ones who make people laugh. The set is fun, but it's our players that make people laugh. So then when you go back to the creators that don't have the big set, it's you that's gonna make someone laugh, right? And whether you do that in your living room, outside at a park, or if you can get into a space that has some good lighting, great. But that's not necessary, right? It's you that's gonna be the one that makes people laugh. and and you have to stick with it. You gotta keep going. As someone that's new and trying to get into the industry, you could walk into this room and be like, oh, the reason that this show is so successful is because there's 20 lights in here, and they're all like $5,000 lights. But when you, when you strip it back and you take a look from the outside looking in, it's soft frontal lighting. It's, it, it's accomplishing what you could theoretically do on it. Like if you just had a nice small set, you could easily scale this down and it would, it would look nearly the same thing and you can do it with even more affordable lights. Truly, it comes down to just knowing what does light do? You have the quality of the light, the color of the light, the direction of the light, that's it. And it never changes, it's always that, those three things. Key hair fill. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you don't want all three, but- Sometimes you don't, it, yes. It, but like, you're gonna put the light somewhere, it's gonna look like something and it's gonna have a color to it. When you learn those core characteristics, you really can apply it to anything at any scale. Uh, look, the only other thing I'll say is if you haven't checked out our content, check it out, dropout.tv, find us on all your favorite platforms. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff and we've got a lot of really great content coming up. I'm very excited for what's coming up next year.